It's Black and Abdallah here on ESPN Chicago. And now, Abdallah, let's talk about the Chicago Bears. ESPN.com has the offseason grading moves, changes for all 32 teams, and they give a letter grade for each team. They give the Chicago Bears a B plus, and the Bears are one of 11 teams in the NFL that have a B or higher grade in that range. There are five teams that got A's, and the Chicago Bears are one of the teams that got a B. Do you agree initially with the uh, letter grade of a B and what Seth Waldron wrote on ESPN.com? Yeah, I think B plus is a fair grade. Um, I would probably give them an A or A minus if they would have upgraded the other side of the defensive line opposite of Montez Sweat. Like if that would have been addressed before now, like I think even something as simple as re-signing an Ikan Gakwe to a team-friendly deal, you know, a prove-it deal, I think that bumps it up to an A-minus because you have a set veteran on the other side of Montez Sweat. But a B-plus, everything, you know, the complete overhaul of the quarterback room, um, you know, adding Keenan Allen, uh, everything else, I think B-plus is pretty well warranted. Here are the teams that are in the B category from this uh, article on ESPN.com. Chicago, Cleveland, Indianapolis, New York Jets, Baltimore, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, San Francisco, Seattle, Tampa Bay, and Tennessee. Those are all the B teams. Hmm. There are five teams that got an A letter grade, Philadelphia, Kansas City, the Los Angeles Chargers, Miami, and New England. I don't like I, I read through the entire article. I don't understand how you give the Bears a B plus, but you give the New England Patriots an A. Well, it's an because, East Coast media. Well, bias, well, essentially, in in the breakdown for the Bears, talked about biggest move Caleb Williams. The move that Seth Waldron liked was the signing of John, uh, Jalen Johnson to a long term deal. The move he disliked was signing of uh, running back DeAndre Swift. And for the Patriots, it was. They like the move, the biggest move of tr uh, drafting Drake May. Mm -hmm. And then the move they didn't like was signing Jacoby Brissett as a backup. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, like, that's all that was listed was the quarterback situation. It's like the Bears upgraded their quarterback position, too, and they have a better roster. How is that not an A compared to the Patriots? It was well, they're also set up to be, to if you look at win totals and projections and stuff, they're also set up to be one of the worst teams in the NFL. So I guess if you give them an A because they're finally acknowledging that this is a full rebuild and they need to start over and they're getting foundational pieces by getting the quarterback who's not necessarily under any pressure to start right away this year, um, you know, and even if he does start, he's, you know, free to make mistakes. Um, so I could see it. I don't agree with it. I think that the Bears are in a much better position, had a much better offseason uh, than the Patriots did. But the Patriots did the best they could. They didn't have the number one pick. They decided to go with Drake May. Um, so I still think the, the Bears, you could have given them an A- minus if you were going to give the Patriots an A. So one of the positives that the article points out for the Chicago Bears is how the Bears dealt a fourth-round pick for Keenan Allen in a one-year $23 million deal. So what the article points out is that when you have a young quarterback with a capable roster, why not go for it, as the article says? Mm -hmm. And then here's the quote. Along with receivers DJ Moore and Roma Dunze and a solid offensive line, if Caleb Williams hits right away, the Bears' offense will be instantly dangerous and the team will be a legitimate contender. A legitimate contender. I don't think that that quote from the article, that if Caleb Williams hits, this team being a leg legitimate contender is that crazy. I think that that's right on. This team is good enough defensively that offensively, you know, we were, we've were we been talking about here on the YouTube channel and on the podcast that if Caleb Williams is just better than Justin Fields, that's an upgrade. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if he hits, if he is legitimately the best quarterback of this rookie class, legitimately a quarterback that, you know, what we saw from C.J. Stroud last year. Why can't the Bears be a contender in this season if that is what happens? If yeah. Caleb Williams is that good, I don't see why they can't be a contender this season. Well, look at the Texans, like you mentioned, with C.J. Stroud. Look at the Packers with Jordan Love. I know he's not a rookie. It was his first year starting. You know, if you can get comparable play to what those guys gave you, the Bears are set up better 
than those two teams. They have a better defense going into this year than both those teams did going into last year. The Bears defense is better than the Texans was last year. The Bears defense is better than the Packers was last year. Sure. Um, they've upgraded with Keenan Allen, with Swift, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you you know, um, Eddie Jackson, now you upgraded, I think is an upgrade with Kevin Bayard. He's there now. Who knows if they add something to the opposite side of Montez Sweat, like I just talked about. So going in on paper, this is a better roster than it was last year. And they still won seven games, you know, with Fields winning most of those games. And so if Caleb Williams can be as good or better than Justin Fields was, if he can give you what CJ Stroud did in his first year uh, as a starter and then what Jordan Love gave you. I mean, Jordan Love, the Packers are talking about giving him $40 million a year after one year of starting. And I understand that's the market and that's what you end up giving him. He's worth it. Absolutely. And so if he can give you that and they can win a playoff game because both CJ Stroud and Jordan Love both won playoff games last year, why can't they be a legit contender? If you get to the second round, if you make the playoffs as a wild card team, and let's say the Packers win the division or the Lions win the division, whatever, and you make the playoffs as a wild card team and you get to the second round, anything can happen. This is a top five defense last year at the end of the year. Now, if you extrapolate it out the whole season, they're still a top 10 defense, even though they had a horrible start to the beginning of the season. You've got better wide receivers. You've got a deeper tight end room. You've got a deeper running back room. You've got depth at more positions. You've got depth on the offensive line. You've got depth on the defensive line. You've got depth at linebacker. This team is now loaded. This is not a Super Bowl caliber roster, I don't think, just yet, because you still have to see more from the young guys, especially we don't know what to expect from Caleb Williams. But if he does give you what C.J. Stroud gave the Texans or what Jordan Love gave the Packers, there's no reason why this team can't be a contender very quickly, if not right away. And the quote from the article on ESPN.com, if Williams hits right away, the Bears offense will be instantly dangerous and the team will be a legitimate contender you can check that out on espn.com nfl offseason grading moves and changes for all 32 teams the bears got a b plus they're one of 11 teams that had a b letter grade there are five teams with the a and i i think that the bears are right there a b plus a level uh off season to this point did he mark them down because they gave uh up a fourth pick for keenan allen is that what that article was saying or saying that in in a positive way uh, I, the way I read it is that that move alone in a vacuum is a bad move. Okay. But because the bears are quote, a team that could go for it with a capable roster okay. because of the situation All right. with Caleb Williams is that th- it, it's the story that we've kind of pointed to this entire off season teams that pick first are not usually teams that have won seven games. Yeah. And so teams that pick first usually don't have a top five defense. No. And that's how like, I read it. Too. Like, and that that's what I took from it is yeah. that because, and he writes, the bears were in a unusual position being able to draft an elite prospect at quarterback mm-hmm. while having a very capable roster. I read it that way too, because you know, if you, uh, some of the videos down right below here, going back to before the draft, a lot of the draft experts were saying, this is like a two and a half round draft. And the talent level kind of drops off. So if you're saying that you can get Keenan Allen for one year for a fourth round pick to me, and you had the money to spend, like they set themselves up and Ryan Pohl set this team up with great cap space going into this year. So you could afford to do a move like that. I think I looked at it as a positive move from what Seth Walder said. So I'm glad that he put that in there as a positive move because Keenan Allen is going to be an absolute resource for Caleb Williams. And even if he's only here for a year, That, I think what Caleb Williams can learn and what Roma Dunze can learn from Keenan Allen, I think that that teaching, what he can bring to the team this year, is going to be invaluable. So giving up a fourth-round pick and and having to pay him for a year, to me, is not that big of a deal because you can afford it, and it was a fourth-round pick. You're getting a legit player for a fourth-round pick, an already established player as opposed to a flyer at wide receiver in the fourth round. Yeah, I'm with you, and... Keenan Allen's been one of my favorite wide receivers because he's the type of guy that's a solid vet who bails out his quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, I I know that Justin Herbert's one of the best quarterbacks in football, but Keenan Allen's the type of guy that makes catches and he he moves the chains. He's able to uh, make the tough catch, help his quarterback out, Mm -hmm. and I think that that's only going to help a rookie quarterback out even more. And as we talk Bears football here on Blockham Dalla, 
You saw something earlier today from Adam Johns in The Athletic yes. with the roster construction, more importantly, specifically with the offensive line and some possible battles when we get to training camp. Well, obviously, he said there's going to be a battle at center. You know, the offensive line coach has come out and said there's going to be a training camp battle for center. But what he's also hearing is uh, a, that w- there could be, and he wouldn't be surprised, didn't say that sources are saying or anything like that, just saying that he wouldn't be surprised if there is a battle for that right guard position where Nate Davis is. Nate Davis is making a lot of money. He missed a lot of training camp last year due to personal issues. He was around the team during mandatory OTAs, but only participated in one mandatory OTA day, but he was there for the other days, but only did drills and stuff for one day. So now you're looking at a possible, can they get their best five? And is Nate Davis going to be a part of that best five? Is Amagaji going to be healthy enough to compete for one of those spots? Could you move Bates to guard uh, if that's an option, if he doesn't win the center job? So they have a lot of options, but it's just, I don't know if it's refreshing. I don't know if it's good. It probably is both that the Bears and they're going to just go with the best five, regardless of what you're being paid. Like he's not guaranteed a spot just because he's a veteran and he's making the most money. Well, and then hopefully he gets his butt in the camp and is trying to work hard Mm -hmm. when the competition is open where his job might be taken. I I think that there's only positive that could come from that when we get into training camp. Correct me if I'm wrong. From what Adam Johns wrote, it's not the first we're hearing of this because hasn't Courtney Cronin on ESPN 1000 Mm -hmm. pointed to maybe there will be competition at more than the center spot Yeah, in in specifically with Nate Davis. Courtney said it and, uh, Brad Biggs alluded to it slightly in the Tribune. Like it wasn't he's hearing it or anything like that. He's just saying, watch for more competition than you might think. All right. So Bears fans, this is how you play it. Uh, If you have three and those three specifically pointing to this, Hmm. that's something that's going to happen. That in training camp, that position is going to be up for grabs. Well, and we know he doesn't like to practice. So he's going to have to practice. Like, like, Like that's where... Uh, this is now a little bit more than some smoke. Yeah. If we're getting from multiple, the athletic, the tribune, ESPN 1000, that this is what is kind of shaping up as we head towards training camp. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it is a daily contest, daily battle that we're going to have to keep our eyes on for that right guard position. And who's going to uh, leave as the starter when we get to the first week of the NFL season. And again, it could just be, put this out there so he maybe gets a kick in the butt. And so he's out there for training camp. And so he can, you know, show what he's worth and prove the worth of the contract, or you could have a legit situation, which is always good, right? I, I always believe that you should draft players to push your veteran players, right? Like guys shouldn't just be like, obviously, you know, DJ Moore is guaranteed a roster spot, mm-hmm. right? Like he's been on the team. He's veteran wide receiver, all that kind of stuff. The guys you just drafted, Tevin Jenkins is, is guaranteed a roster spot. You drafted him a few years ago. Darnell Wright's guaranteed a roster spot, that kind of stuff. Not saying that Nate Davis isn't going to make a ro- the roster, but just as far as like, you know, guys that need to come in, which they didn't do at defensive end to kind of, you know, push Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat doesn't really need pushing, but guys that do need the extra you know, kick in the butt. You should always draft younger players to push your veterans so they know that, hey, if someone's young, just because you're making this amount of money, if they're younger and better, we need to win. So just because you're older and making more money, sorry, doesn't mean you're guaranteed a spot. If we go back to last season, I truly feel like it was a 50-50 proposition with Nate Davis. He he had some games where he was playing well, and then there were some games where he was like really struggling. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't think he's the type of player where we should run him out of town. No, no, no. Because no. I, I do think he was a productive football player last year along the line uh, with this younger offensive line. I, I do think there were games that he struggled, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's where perhaps the competition could push him Hopefully he's ready because I, I do think he did struggle early too. Yeah. Last season. Uh, so it's just something we have to keep our eyes on as we we're about five weeks away from the start of training camp. So 
Uh, as the summer winds on here and we continue to talk football on Black and Abdallah, that's something we're going to keep our eyes on. He's Adam Abdallah. I'm Chris Black. This is After Hours on YouTube. And also make sure you download the podcast on the ESPN Chicago app and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll talk to you later.